So the wait is finally over and a new version of this Raspberry Pi board is available on the market. It has been long 4 years since this version was released back in 2019. In the last few years there have been quite a few improvements on this board and the newer board is almost 20% better than when it was first released but it's still not a big improvement if you compare it with different versions of this board. Ever since this board was released in 2019, millions of copies of this board has been sold even when you consider the supply chain issues. The newer released Raspberry Pi 5 has very significant improvements as compared to its predecessors. So in this video we are going to take a look at all the features of this new board and what has changed from the earlier versions. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. One of the biggest changes made in this version of Raspberry Pi is the introduction of new Broadcom processor. In the previous versions, it was BCM2711, but they have now upgraded to BCM2712, which is the latest version of this series. The operating frequency is also higher up to 2.4 GHz as compared to the 1.8 on the Raspberry Pi 4 version. And the processor also used the new 16 nanometer technology as compared to the older 28 nanometer which was used in Raspberry Pi 4. This newer CPU is also enclosed in a metal heat spreader to provide better thermal performance for this system. Before we proceed further, consider subscribing to this channel to get the latest news regarding different hardware and exciting new projects. In addition to this newer CPU, there is also now a dedicated GPU in the same chipset as well. This is a Broadcom Video Core 7 GPU, although the frequency on this one is relatively low, merely up to 800 MHz. When we talk about the memory configuration, Raspberry Pi 5 comes in two memory configurations at the moment, one with 4 and one with 8 gigabits. This memory is also now LPDDR4X instead of LPDDR in the previous versions. Let's take a look at the hardware. Raspberry Pi 5 uses the exact same form factor as its predecessors in order to remain compatible with all the extra accessories which are available with the previous versions. The first major thing that you will notice is that this 3mm audio jack is gone in the newer versions. Two mini HDMI connectors are still present on the board. The size of camera and display MIPI connector has reduced and it's now the same size as the one in the Raspberry Pi Zero version. These are four lane MIPI interfaces and they use the same high density pinout as found in the various generations of compute modules from the Raspberry Pi foundation. These connectors are connected to a bi-directional transceiver. This means that you can either connect a camera or a display so this connector is not a standard MIPI connector, so you need a special cable to connect to normal MIPI connectors. One of the most exciting features of this newer Raspberry Pi board is the addition of PCI Express Lane directly on the board itself. And it is exposed via an M2 connector. This will allow to connect various high-speed external devices with the Raspberry Pi, especially NVMe SSDs which will allow much more faster I.O. operations. This will also improve the overall responsiveness of the board, although this feature will come later in 2024. The space on the left side of the board, which was formerly occupied by the display connector, now contains a smaller FPC connector, which provides this PCI Express connectivity. You can connect high-speed peripherals with this connector. Although this PCI Express was present in compute modules from the Raspberry Pi, the general Raspberry Pi boards did not have this feature. Even though the addition of PCI Express for Raspberry Pi is very exciting, we will still have to wait for it to work properly, since the previous versions at running graphic cards through the compute modules have not been very successful. Let's now take a look at the Ethernet port. On Raspberry Pi 4s, the Ethernet port was located on the right side, while in all the previous versions it was located on the left side. So with the new addition of Raspberry Pi 5, this has gone back to the classical position. This board still supports power over Ethernet, but for that you need to use a special hat made for this purpose. 
a newer version of this poe hat is coming but it's in early 2024 so you will have to wait for it this time it is an l-shaped connector there is now a dedicated fan connector to connect the external fans which are pwm controlled so their speed varies according to the temperature this improves the thermal performance significantly on this version the idle power consumption for this chip has gone up to 12 watts as compared to the 8 watts on the previous version. The default power supply that comes with this Raspberry Pi modules is now 5 volts and 5 amps as compared to the 3 amps. Due to the extra heat generated by the Raspberry Pi, it can throttle very quickly if you don't provide active cooling. For those who value silence over raw performance, there is some good news. The power and the thermal management capabilities of Raspberry Pi are extremely good so that it can run under throttle conditions indefinitely without any damage and even running at its lowest clock of 1.5 GHz you can expect the Raspberry Pi to at least draw level with or even mildly outperform an unthrottled Raspberry Pi 4. In regards to the PCB design, you now have dedicated mounting holes directly on the PCB. And Raspberry Pi now also supports the RTC battery and there is a dedicated connector for that on the board as well. One of the main reasons why Raspberry Pi offers significant improvements on this newer model is the way how it works. There is now an application specific IC directly on the board which takes care of some peripheral tasks. This newer chip now controls the Ethernet, USB, MIPI ports and the GPIO. So this gives CPU more time to focus on highly computational tasks. Let's now take a look at the Raspberry Pi's performance. As you can see from the image, the synthetic benchmarks show that Raspberry Pi is at least twice fast as the previous version. In majority of the benchmarks, the performance of Raspberry Pi 5 is significantly better than the Raspberry Pi 4's. The RAM read and write speeds have been significantly improved and in some cases it goes up to 7 times faster. Thanks to the dedicated ASIC chip, the peripheral speeds has been significantly improved in this board. Both Raspberry Pi 4 and 5 supports SD card but in Raspberry 5, the SD card speed is extremely faster due to the SDR104 mode. Even for USB, the Raspberry Pi 5 still supports 3.0 but its speeds can go up to 5 gigabits per second. Raspberry Pi 5 has come after a long wait but the specifications indicate that the wait was completely worth it. It is better in almost every aspect. And with this we come to an end of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.